in today's program. The world through the eyes of the photographers Farhat Kabdekairov, Bagit Gasanov, and Vladislav Ushakov. Three professionals and three different arts. Здравствуйте. Hello. The art of photography has been popular since its birth. It's a unique opportunity to capture any moment and to remember it for the rest of your life. It's no wonder that sometimes photo can tell you more than a whole report or an article. And today, we will tell you about people who have devoted their lives to this art, doing their job professionally and correct. They prove that the photography is also high art. It is said that photographer from Kazakhstan, Farhat Kabdekairov, has God-given talent. And it's true, because when you start watching his work, you immediately admire and unwittingly catch yourself thinking that you want to see even more pictures with wonderful landscapes and non-trivially represented images. At the same time, you realize that taking a real photo is not just taking a camera and clicking the shutter a couple of times. This requires skill, talent, and a great desire to create masterpieces. Farhat Kabdekairov, candidate of mathematical sciences, he defended his thesis at the Moscow University, and it's quite possible he could have made a great career in science. But one day suddenly he changed the chosen profession in favor of photography. And as it turned out, the choice was quite deliberate. Basically, I could probably work in some big structures. Given my experience as a scientist and my intelligence, I could hold a high position and make good money. But I chose photography. I like the wide variety of what you can do here. I exhibit not only landscapes, wild animals, I have my own studio, equipped according to the latest technology. I'm making photos of people, I really like to shoot interiors and exterior. That is, the profession of mathematician often helps me in building a shot. I've never been tired of this profession in the past 30 years. Photography always keeps me in shape. That's why I like it. And indeed, many different things can be seen in Farhad's creative portfolio, from black and white pictures shot on film to works that are made using current advanced technologies. I always wonder how I can cope, what a quick solution I'll find because the profession always expects you to not miss one decisive moment in the same reporting or sports. Somewhere, on the contrary, you need to show great patience, stand and wait for some dawn or sunset to catch rays as they light up the tops of mountains or clouds. So if I were only doing one kind of photography, I'd probably get bored. When someone is watching Farhat Kabdekairov's albums, it seems that it's a collection of paintings of a real artist. They're so picturesque and amazing. And as our hero admits, it's very troublesome and quite expensive to organize an expedition, create conditions for effective work, and get the desired result. Let's say I was shooting my second album. I fully hired the plane in 2011, and on this plane, we flew all over Kazakhstan. It was quite expensive. But thanks to the fact that at the time I bought the best camera in the world, after eight years I still look at those photos and understand that all of them are still relevant. In order to take pictures of the aircraft, you need to have a certain skill. I was tied to a parachute belt, the door was open, and I was shooting from above. I had three or four cameras hanging on me. Two more were in the plane. In addition to shooting some landscapes, I managed to take pictures of some animals from above. It was a huge fatigue and a great joy. My friend Oleg Bilyalov gave me a very good idea. 
We made the album Kazakhstan, the homeland of tulips, because mainly all those tulips that appeared all over the world initially appeared on our territory. A little in Uzbekistan, partly in Kyrgyzstan. And when you see a wild tulip like Greg's huge tulip of this size, it's certainly a delight, because from here the bulbs went to Turkey and from there to Holland. During 30 years of work, Farhat visited practically the entire Kazakhstan, and that's hundreds, even thousands of kilometers. And today, to the smallest details, he can tell about the particular region of the country, about local beauty and attractions. According to him, nature is often favorable to him and gives just incredible shots. So, he's happy to recall some of his trips. I had a situation for the first time it was in the east of Kazakhstan, and I got to Rachmanovsky Lake. I went up there and I took a very interesting shot. There was so much multicolor. The front background is red at the expense of some air berries, then beautiful green, very bright golden large, then blue lake, snowy tops, and deep blue sky. Everything was so amazing. It's luck. And about myself I can say, I'm more lucky than unlucky. Our hero manages to show cities and their architecture in an incredibly beautiful manner. For example, what a delight his album is. It is dedicated to the capital of Kazakhstan. It can rightly be described as one of the best and brilliant. In general, Farhat likes to shoot this city, and that's why. First, it's water. There is a river when you can freeze it with special dark filters and even during the day, make some interesting panoramic shots. Shoot with a TV lens with a narrow focus and compress everything in this perspective. Basically, the weather often changes. There are very interesting clouds. Of course, I want to capture it correctly. To shoot correctly is the creative creed of our hot cup And correctly, means with competence, spectacular and sincere. Take a look, for example, at his reports from the 2018 World Cup, where he worked for 35 days, moved from one city to another, lived in hostels, buses, trains, met people, talked to them and took amazing photos. Note how heartfelt the shots are. Looking at them, you plunge into the atmosphere that prevailed in Russia during that period. By the way, many football stars were caught on his camera 12 of which the viewers saw in the calendar of 2019, published by the photographer himself. Farhad is also a big fan of tennis, and he admits that he always dreamt to get on at least one tournament of the Grand Slam to see stars of the court live. And, as it is said, it's only necessary to believe, because all our thoughts materialize once the stars came to Kazakhstan. When I heard that Djokovic and Nadal were coming to us, I naturally made every effort to take photos. Of course, I dreamt of these pictures. I wanted to take them. You know, I'm a fan of Djokovic and Federer myself. I don't really like Nadal because he plays protective tennis. I love both attacking football and tennis and everything else. When I was taking pictures, I realized that Djokovic was boring for that. Nadal has such a palette of emotions, he's invested in every stroke, so that I just fell in love with him. And Nadal's pictures are the best, by the way. Many of Farhad's colleagues respect his ambition, his creative dedication, his meticulous attitude towards work and generosity of his soul. Each of us sees a good picture, and this picture is for yourself, for a few people. And Farhad always has a goal – to present it to people as it is, and even better.
As it turned out, Farhad Kabdekairov is so fanatical about his profession that he does not spare any means and tries to create maximum conditions for effective work. For example, he has more than 120 lenses, as they say, for all occasions. Moreover, in his studio we saw cameras, the existence of which was not known before. It's rare, exclusive and expensive equipment that only big professionals can afford. And they can talk for hours about the merits of a model. One of the greatest features when you shoot a landscape. If you have a camera shaking in your hands, you turn on the feature and it won't shoot until the camera comes down. You can shoot on the street with a flash on very short shutter. You can achieve a special effect that on the brightest day you can get the feeling that it was taking in the evening. This Hasselblad camera was a discovery to me. Because it's small, it looks like a so, but it has a huge matrix, lenses can be changed, and it turned out that it has unrealistic outstanding quality of both lenses and the picture itself. Color reproduction and everything. There is a camera slope here. It's often an essential thing when you take a shot of a landscape and get sharpness from the front object, flowers, stones, for example, to infinity. You have a changing camera slope, which is the Schleifold phenomenon. And you can also shoot in such a way that by putting the camera in a horizontal position, you can move the top and bottom in such a way that you shoot the architecture correctly. All this is the technique that allows you to shoot all your fantasies. Finally, we decided to ask our hero what are the important things a person who would like to become a real photographer must know. And that's what he said. You have to think about it 24 hours to love this profession because it's really a cool profession. Even if it's a hobby, it's a very good one. In general, not everyone can take photos of the nature skillfully, even a professional photographer. You can spend a few days just to take one successful shot. Moreover, to catch the mood of the nature, you need to love it and know everything about it. That's what our next heroes do. One is from Bishkek, the other is from Baku. They say about themselves that they are avid travelers and photographers at the same time. It must be said that thanks to their creativity, many people from all over the world fall in love with Kyrgyzstan, Azerbaijan, and are eager to visit these countries. Kyrgyzstan is a state located in the heart of Central Asia. And despite the fact that in terms of area, the country occupies the 85th place in the world and it significantly comes short in this regard to its neighbors in the north and east. Until today, even the locals have not fully understood the uniqueness of its nature and geographical objects. Travel photographers who have captured on their cameras many beautiful and incredible places of the Kyrgyz land are convinced. One of these photographers is Vladislav Ushakov. At one time, he used to work as a photojournalist and in general devoted to photography 20 years of his life. And if you want to find out who has the largest photo base in this country, we will let you know. Of course, Vladislav Ushakov is the one. In 2011, he began to travel and take photos with his camera of fantastically beautiful, extraordinary and little-known landscapes. And in 2016, decided to create a club of like-minded people who drive all over Kyrgyzstan, find amazing places and take picturesque photos. 
сейчас я больше такой travel блогер можно сказать. То есть меньше занимаюсь журналистикой и больше занимаюсь путешествиями. Ну, около 8 лет. I'm more of a traveler blogger now. I do less journalism and I travel more. About eight years ago, we started traveling in Kyrgyzstan. At first, it was one-time trips with people with whom it was pleasant and interesting to travel. And three years ago, we created a traveler's club. It's not a travel firm, namely a club. We gather people who want to see Kyrgyzstan, but are on a budget. That is, we do not provide luxury hotels. We just provide a luxurious country to travel through. We have common budget for food, transport, any other services and travel around the country several times a month. Members of this club call themselves nomads. However, unlike their ancestors, they use modern transport and use tents instead of yurts. Vladislav Ushakov says that if you want, for a nominal fee you can see quite many fantastic places in Kyrgyzstan and take a lot of incredible photos during the trip. It's very cheap. On average, the journey takes about 1,500,000 psalms. If you convert this amount to dollars, you get less than $15. It's said that Kyrgyzstan is unique with its beauty at any time of the year. And that's true. By the way, during one short trip to this amazing country, it's possible to see all seasons of the year. For example, in spring, when it's already a warm weather in the capital and it's heavy rain, it springs up. In the south of the country, there is already hot weather and ripening fruits. At the same time, snow is still lying on the highlands and it's still sub-zero temperature there. In a short period of time, for example, three seasons can be seen on the way from Bishkek to Batken. You come there and it's summer, and on the way you can catch both winter and spring. Therefore, Kyrgyzstan is interesting both geographically and climatically. We have different animals, plants in each climate zone. This is also very interesting for foreign photographers. The photographer traveler is sure that only a few natural objects of Kyrgyzstan are known to the world, but they are wrong because there are thousands of gorges and caves in this country. For some reason, at the international level, it is commonly believed that Isakul Lake is the only attraction of the country, and that's all. Although we have a lot of beautiful areas, for example, Jalalabad region, which has huge tourist potential and it's very beautiful, there are both geoparks and reserves. But Ken region is also unique. One of my favorite places is Nukat district of Vash region. The area is called Tuyamuyun, which means camel's neck. There are so many caves that people can visit without a special physical training, without any speleological equipment. It's very beautiful and unusual. I recommend it. Такое сосредоточение пещер, где можно без всякого спелеологического оборудования, просто даже люди, которые не подготовлены для лазания по пещерам, могут их посетить. Это, это очень красиво, это очень необычно. И прямо вот рекомендую. Kyrgyzstan is a country where any traveler can become a pioneer of new lands or an astronomer was discovered an uncharted yet planet. Vladislav Ushakov is exactly this kind of person. He was lucky to visit several places like that, 
which are absolutely unknown to the most part of the local citizens. Jodar Unkur, which translates as Dragon's Cave, it's the largest bat colony in Kyrgyzstan. When you enter the cave, the ceiling is 2-3 meters high above you, and it's moving. There are so many bats, there is a great buried cave. It's full of semi-precious minerals. I mean like you're trapped in a fairy Alibaba's cave. You know it needs to be seen, it needs to be experienced in person. Visiting the outskirts of the Batkan district, there may be a feeling that you have reached some other planet where arid mountains of different colors dominate. It is said that this was once the bottom of the disappeared ocean. Fergana Valley is considered the bottom of the disappeared ocean. It's very interesting when you come from Tashkumir. The mountains are absolutely dry, and there are turtles, snakes, scorpions, and lizards. You can see seashells instead of stones under your feet while you are walking. The same place is in Batken, which is near the valley. The place is called Saratol, which means Rainbow Mountains. Going in there is like you're coming to another planet. There are a lot of gorges, and they all differ from each other. Instead of stones, there are dry shells which are 40 million years old. By the way, it's scientifically proven that dinosaur species used to live there. Conversations with such people like Vladislav Fushakov are full of insight. Looking at his photo albums, you see the world through different eyes and start loving and admiring your country more and more. According to Vladislav, Kyrgyzstan is a whole treasure trove for those who are interested in history, because there are many locations with cave paintings. And all these drawings and inscriptions from different centuries. But the most surprising thing in Kyrgyz lands, as our hero believes, is that as a result of several trips to the same place, any traveler and photographer can always discover something new. Photographer Vahid Gasanov has been passionate about landscape shooting for several years. Photos and videos of the Azerbaijan's nature that were made by the photographer are presented in such a heartfelt way that it fascinates almost everyone. In general, landscape shooting is considered one of the most difficult and at the same time interesting genres of photo art. To capture the beautiful moments of natural phenomena, the landscape photographer must constantly travel, walk hundreds of kilometers on mountain and steppe roads and patiently expect suitable weather. This is the only way to get magical pictures of the nature. Only true lover of landscape will be able to understand and feel nature. I have started photography at 22. Before that, I loved drawing, but it was clearly not enough for me. I felt that I was missing something. When I took the camera, I realized that was what I needed. I liked taking pictures more than drawing. After that, I dropped my studies at the university and began to travel a lot. I was shooting various landscapes and soon my pictures became recognizable. I found myself in a landscape shooting. When I drew, I always felt I needed more real images. During every journey, I understood it more and more. Sometimes it happens that you have to wait a week or 10 days to get one picture. There has to be a suitable weather so I can be satisfied with the desired result. 
To show the volumes of an object, you need some comparison. And usually, in these cases, I use people, so I can show the scale of nature, its greatness. Usually, I go hitchhiking. I sleep in my tent. Sometimes locals give me a place to sleep. In my backpack, there is a sleeping bag, other equipment for the traveler. As a rule, I start on a trip alone, although sometimes there are those who wish to keep me company. However, many do not stand long-term wandering in mountains and steps. Before I go on the road, I check for the weather forecast. I love the presence of some fog in nature, especially when the sun's rays break through the fog. Having reached the place I communicate with local residents, I found out whether there are interesting natural landscapes, waterfalls, for example. I always share my pictures if I like them. If not, I save them in digital media storage. <laughs> Vahid is a kind of specialist who can professionally and skillfully show all nuances of nature and historical monuments. He manages to easily involve the viewer in the magic of the landscape to show the surrounding nature and its beauty in a way that no one has seen before. In his frames from Kabbalah, Hizi, Sheki, and other regions of Azerbaijan, seemingly ordinary to everyone, mountains, lakes, and fog, acquire some fairy tale-like appearance and give spiritual peace. Before I start shooting, I walk around for at least half an hour thinking about angles and how I'll photograph the place. Then I wait for the right weather, and I don't rule out having to wait a day or maybe two. The best pictures are usually made during sunrise and sunset. If I can't take the right picture, I'm waiting for the next day, until I get the best one. Once during the live broadcast on social media, three big dogs attacked me. I barely pulled through. Three times I ran up against bears. I constantly meet such kind of predators as chakals. It happened that for the sake of a successful shot, I had to wait for the right weather, and I completely forgot to eat. I drank only water, and there were no dead fallen branches around, so I couldn't even light a fire. And it's all for one shot. <laughs> There's a waterfall in Zakatala. Only few people know about it. But this is the biggest waterfall I've ever seen. You can't reach it by car. And to get there, you have to get to the village first. And after that, you have to walk for two more days. By the way, that's where I met the bear. I specialize in nature and animal photography, and that's it. I get a lot of offers to shoot various holidays and weddings, but I refuse. I can't shoot things I don't like. I love nature. That's why I take photos of it. <laughs> Vahid has a dream. Despite the popularity, he wants to show people as much beauty of his country as possible and glorify his native Azerbaijan for the whole world. For this, he spends a lot of effort, energy, time, seizing every opportunity. And nature, in turn, always rewards him for his love and careful attitude.
That's all for today. You have watched Colors of Asia. See you next time.